Welcome back, everyone, to my Let's Play of Star Tropics. In the last episode, Mr. Stumnus just got a submarine. He's been sailing the uh, ocean for a few hours, and he happens to come across a mother dolphin. Navcom here, Captain. She is a female dolphin. We'll begin translation. Please find my son. He has disappeared. Captain, may I promise her to find her boy dolphin? No! Mr. Tumnus, come on. You gotta be a nice boy. Come on. Good job. Aye, aye, Captain. Thank you. Please find my son. Now, if you notice, we have two more heart containers. Uh, the game uh, will often give you uh, hearts between chapters, and sometimes within chapters you can find hearts. If you don't find the hearts, though, uh, the game will just give them to you if you did find them. Hello, I maintain the lighthouse. So you're looking for a boy dolphin. Sorry, but I have not seen him. Oh, please visit my wife at our south house. She enjoys company. So yeah, uh, you can find the hearts, uh, and that'll make some dungeons easier because you have more hearts, uh, so you can take more hits. But if you miss a heart, uh, you don't have to really worry about it because when you complete the chapter of the game, we'll give you all the hearts as if you found uh, the hearts. So you're only missing out on, you know, the hearts for that chapter. Welcome, welcome. It's so seldom my husband and I get visitors. So you're looking for a boy dolphin, so I... But I've not seen him. But early this morning, I saw a bottle on the beach. I wonder if it's a clue to the lost dolphin. All right. Talking with her is the sequence trigger to have that dolphin, that uh, bottle appear on the beach up there. So if you look by the mountains, there's like a little bit of a uh, shade. That's your little clue that, you know, there's like a hidden passage there. There's a note in the bottle. You read it. Hello, captured by evil aliens. Tell my nephew to use the code 1776, Dr. J. That's uh, when the Declaration of Independence was signed. So, yeah, a lot of the uh, input clues are basically from historical events. So you can learn history while you uh, play the game. So let's input that code. Navcom here, Captain. Input the ID code now. Aye, aye, Captain. Submersible uh, mode is engaged. So now we can submerge uh, the subsea uh, when we go to uh, the tiles that have those little wavy lines on them. We just press the B button, and it's like a little, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, like a little uh, warp point. So we look for the little uh, hidden tile there, and we get a little heart container. So there we go. And we get a big heart, and that increases our life by uh, one heart, so. Like I said, if we miss that dough, well, uh, then it's okay, because, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, you know, like I said, they'll give it to us in the next chapter anyway, so. But I'll be finding all the hearts, showing you where they're all at. So, we don't have to worry about that. So we got these little mud skippers that pop out. We got a baseball bat there. Remember, Mr. Tumnus is a, a pitcher. Uh, so he, a lot of the items that uh, he'll be able to pick up, the sub weapons are baseball related. So, we got a bat. Later on, there'll be like uh, cleats. Uh, there'll be baseballs. So, Mr. Tumnus is a very talented rat. So. Taking out these little mud skippers, you gotta watch they take two hits, but they'll pop up when you get closer to the edge, and just hit them twice and uh, you'll be okay. So, when uh, there's a door in the room, just, uh, you know, uh, defeat all the enemies, if there ain't no uh, foot panels around. So, we've got some octopuses here, like Octorox from Zelda. But at least they don't shoot rocks. Just gotta time our jumps here. Remember, Mr. Tumnus cannot swim. Rats do not like water. So... Hit that little button, and we head up into here. So this is where the baseball bat comes in handy. Uh, basically what the baseball bat does is it does a, a little uh, a 360 arc around you. So sometimes there'll be like enemies that are just off uh, offline of you. And the baseball bat can hit him. Let's wait for this bat. Like a keys from Zelda. And we just uh, found another foot pad there. Walk through the little passageway. Always look for the little uh, dark little outline on the floor. That's your indication that there's a hidden passageway. 
And before we head up into this room, we want to uh, we want to select our baseball bat when we get into the room, because we can hit all these starfish right away. That's a good way to take care of those enemies. We got a puffer fish there. He's a little out of range, but luckily we don't have to defeat him to uh, go into this uh, next room. So got some hearts. Another pad to open up the door. More bats. Always bats. Mm -hmm. um, typical enemy. So we could go over to the right. That's the way we want to go. But we're going to go take a little detour to get some medicine. So, Although the boss of this dungeon is pretty easy. Because the game we're going to provide you with a magic item that basically makes him cake. But still, I want to show off pretty much everything. So we've got some more medicine there. And we're going to open up a passageway over here. To get back into the room with these uh, four starfish. But this time, instead of going north, we're going to head over to the right. Oh, she got hit by the starfish. And I'm going to try to find a foot pad here to open the door and open that treasure chest. So inside the treasure chest is the snowman. It's a magical item. And basically what it does is it freezes all enemies, including the boss. So uh, definitely want to uh, use that to our advantage. Because the boss is right up ahead. Hey, we got the little dolphin, the boy dolphin up there. And here's our second boss, Octo the Fuse. So he's just a big octopus that shoots uh, ink balls at you. And he's going to stay out of range for a little bit, and then he's going to hop forward. When he hops forward, we're going to select our snowman. It freezes him in place. Just jump in front of him and just hammer away at him with our island star. Now when the water turns uh, the bright blue again, that means he's unfrozen. And we can just refreeze him again. And after about uh, two freezes, uh, if you're really fast with mashing, uh, you can take him out in one. Uh, cycle, but I'm not a fast masher, so it took me two cycles, but that's okay. Mr. Tumnus has prevailed, and he has saved the baby boy dolphin. Way to go. And he swims out to find his mom. Woohoo, there he is. Wow, we've done it. All right. Once again, save our game automatically. And let's go back into our uh, subsea. And it looks like the baby dolphin there is waiting for us. What's it saying? Navcom here, Captain. He is the boy dolphin. He is thanking us for saving him. Let's signal the mother. There she is. We'll never forget your kindness. Now, we must help you. Follow me. And uh, that kindness is going to pay off not just right here, where uh, she takes us through this uh, little uh, reef, this barrier reef, but much, much later in the game. So don't forget about these dolphins, because they'll never forget about Mr. Tumnus' kindness. See, Mr. Tumnus, it's important that you help people out. There we go. And with that, we are heading on to Chapter 3, one of the longest chapters in the game. Multiple dungeons? Suddenly it gets dark and stormy on the ocean. The sea tosses subsea. Uh oh. The ship is wrecked. Mr. Tumnus is stranded on the beach. Uh oh. Face down in the sand. Poor Mr. Tumnus. Uh oh. Mr. Tumnus awakens to find subsea wrecked in the storm. It's always strangely calm after a storm. Uh oh. From now on, you have to walk. Well, I guess he's, Mr. Tums is going to have to walk to find some help because he does not know how to fix the sub. Hopefully, you can find somebody who can. Willie, find out in the next episode. Bye.